Hey guys, welcome back to the Perform Motion YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be going through an example of some ways we can look at doing rehab programming when athletes hurt themselves one week out. So we've got an example of a lift today we're going to use and just some ways we can look at different structuring methods of making sure this athlete gets to the platform, especially considering just how their injury occurred, the type of injury they have and the type of lift that they have as well. So this is just an example of a way you can look at it. With every single athlete, it's always going to be different. So a lightweight female will be very different to a heavyweight male and vice versa. So today we're gonna to be talking about a male under 105 kilo lift on. They had a left lumbar strain. They didn't have any like neural symptoms. So they didn't have any sensations of weakness or that sciatica style sensation or pain running down the leg or anything like that. It just felt like a, a muscular pain and therefore just like, uh, weakness in the area because of the pain rather than anything else. Uh, the athlete described it as it was too painful to go through anything like squat, deadlift, lower body movements where they're bending, but they're still able to arch on a bench press perfectly fine. So what we're going to go through next is just a couple of key considerations for this lifter, um, this individual lifter especially. So. One of the first things we can start with is because we had no neural issues with the lifter, we can pretty much determine that it's most likely going to be muscular in origin. So this bodes very well for us because this is where we have the most impact with our intervention. So we're gonna be trying to look at keeping this athlete feeling like they can move comfortably, move well, move without pain as they go through this uh, table week into their program. Because the best thing about them being a male 105 is that at this point, all the work has most likely been done for this lifter. So their taper was most likely going to be fairly easy in comparison to the rest of their training program. So they don't have to worry about having to try and scrap in additional work or try and hit certain percentages or numbers at this point in their prep. So this once again makes it easier for us. We don't have to tick any sort of major intensity boxes. The next point we also want to look at as well is because of this, because the work has been done, we really want to make sure this athlete is feeling confident over anything else. So the, the idea of perfect movement pretty much goes out the window here. Like this athlete doesn't need to be moving perfectly. They don't need to be worrying about any hip shifts occurring or any sort of imbalances or asymmetries that they are looking like or observing they're having. The biggest thing we need to make sure is that the athlete feels confident with their movement. They feel like they could drop into their squat. They feel like they could pick up anything with their deadlifts. They feel just confident in their body and their body's ability. And that very much leads into this idea of having intent or output to come back. So because the athlete is a larger lifter, they've already done all their hard training pretty much perfectly up to this point in the injury or since the injury occurred. At this point here, their strength is very much there. So when we get these kinds of injuries, especially muscular in nature, we tend to almost feel like we have a dampener in our body. It's very hard to feel like we have our usual sort of power output or intensity or intent to kind of push with certain weights. So that's going to be the focus of this taper as well, making sure this athlete feels like they can push to their full ability and use all that strength that they've built. And then the last point to remember as well is that bench press is fairly unaffected here. So we don't have to change a thing with bench press. We wanna try and keep bench press rolling in the background like it normally does, how it usually does in their program. And this does gives us a little bit of information as well in regards to the movements that might make them feel good. So because bench press is most likely unaffected, to us that tells us that extension is an aggravator. Because deadlift and squat are feeling more uncomfortable, that tells us that more hip flexion or lumbar flexion might be an aggravator. And these are little bits of information that we can pick before we even get to our testing, before we even get to more of the analysis of the athlete themselves. So if we move into more of what their normal table would have looked like here, um, they usually train four days a week with Saturday this week of the game day, um, being the game day or the competition day. So as you can see, the usual structure of their program is the deadlift being on a Monday, squat being on a Wednesday, bench being on a Thursday, and then the primary squat being on the game day. But because it's competition, that's going to fall on the competition day this week. So down the bottom, you can see how we have like um, alternating arrows. So as the week progresses, ideally what we want is we want that pain to come down to the lowest possible position by game day. And we want the confidence to do the complete opposite. So we effectively want this point here about like Wednesday, Thursday as our marker where the athlete feels this new sense of hope. And that's usually what happens in these kinds of tapers here is that the Monday, even like the Wednesday, they're still feeling not crash hot, but by that Wednesday, Thursday kind of transition, right when those two hours kind of intersect, that's when the athletes start to feel like they're coming back. And that's exactly what we want to be going for as our marker. So as we go through this kind of athlete's taper, what we can do is when they get that Wednesday, Thursday, that's where we can decide 
decide whether we want to change anything with the intervention, add any additional sort of movement prep exercises, potentially look at getting any sort of like release work if that's what they find helps them. But from a tapering and programming perspective, this is an example of a way that you could structure this for an under 105 male. So let's say they hurt themselves on the Saturday the week before, and they're still feeling uncomfortable on the Sunday, they're still feeling uncomfortable on the Monday. So if they've come to the Monday, and effectively here, we want to try and make sure this athlete is ready for the competition on Saturday. We know that they're going to be fed, like feeling better in terms of pain, discomfort because of the style of injury that I have by Saturday. We want to make sure that all their lifts show up as well. So usually Monday is going to be their deadlift day, but because of the size of the athlete and like the fact that they've already done their heavy pulls, we can kind of assume here with the deadlift that it's most likely going to carry over um, into the competition as long as we have that athlete's ability to push with their legs there and a little bit of hinging work so that the back is kind of primed for the day. So because we're assuming on a Monday here, the athlete is still going to be feeling at their worst in their left lower back, we want to look at implementing some movements that are going to be priming the athlete for later in the week without necessarily aggravating anything. So like we were saying before, that little bit of information we had, bench press is pretty much unaffected. So bench press will run as per normal into the competition like it would because extension feels fine. But on this Monday, we want to be implementing a little bit more sort of deloaded movements for the spine that still get the athlete to feel like they can push and load. So some examples of this is something like a belt squat and an RDL. So these two combine the same nature of a movement as a deadlift, as we have the hinge pattern where we have lumbar loading being trained in the RDL, but we also have the pushing capacity of the belt squat being implemented here too. So it's a nice addition for when someone isn't feeling at their best, but they still need to be working on some movements. And this can be trained up to like a, a low medium RP, especially on something like the belt squat because the lumbar isn't too loaded. Then when we move to the Wednesday, that's where we want to start to be moving back towards um, more of the barbell movements like the squats. So the athlete should be starting to feel better and better by this point here through a lot of the movement prep exercises that they've been doing, just freeing up range of motion, maybe a little bit of manual re release as well. Confidence is starting to build here. So this is where we want to look at doing something a little bit harder with their squat. So it may not necessarily be working up to a... Um, last warm up or their opener but it might be working up to something within that realm there trying to keep everything once again focusing on confidence so if the athlete isn't necessarily feeling at their best we want to be moving as heavy as we can before it feels like they're starting to second guess themselves or feel something that may be dampening their confidence in the movement and then once again, we can kind of move that same sort of pattern to a Thursday. So even though this athlete usually only squats on a Wednesday and a Saturday, we can look at adding in a nice light, fast squat on a Thursday as well as another primer. Because at this point here, they're gonna be feeling more and more confident again, because we had like a good amount of time since the injury, the body will be just naturally restoring itself to its baseline in terms of movement and pain and sensations. So we can use that Thursday as another primer again to get them under a barbell, help them feel confident, let them move the weight fast again. And that's going to help them feel like they can show up a little bit more on a Saturday. So this is just one example of a way that you could apply it for 105 lifter. There's a number of different ways you can go about it. But an example of this is something that we use when we do have athletes that present in this style of manner. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening.